California is the home of climatologist and new media artist Professor Greg has been using interactive computer programs to re-examine his basic assumptions that our pollution has naturally developed a consciousness of its own by interacting with computers. In May of this year, people began sighting a small black cloud. Area suffers from poor air quality. Residents, Residents reported that the cloud seemed to hover in the areas with the worst air quality, moving quickly to the next location as conditions changed. It started in Egypt. Uh, they have a black cloud in Egypt that uh, comes in October. And uh, so what we thought is we want to measure that black cloud. And so we built these little boxes to measure pollution. And uh, then we got the opportunity to make a project in Los Angeles. And uh, the city of Los Angeles doesn't necessarily have a black cloud like that. But as a myth, it's very good because it gives people the opportunity to talk about pollution and us causing pollution and addressing pollution directly. And it makes it, the whole thing an actionable experience. In this time, if you put a, a device like that's electronic and blinks anywhere, the first association is, oh, it's a bomb, right? And uh, so we have to make sure we paint it so that it doesn't look like a bomb. So that's where the blue came from. And this cartoon character has 25 eyes, and the eyes of the character are actually the indications of the intensity of pollution. Uh, blue is temperature, white is sound, Orange is carbon dioxide, and red is volatile organic compounds. So it senses all these five um, values and transmits it via a cell phone out here to the uh, Black Cloud website. The most polluted site we've been to so far is Manual Arts. <laughs> Like this spike might be highest, but there's not much around it. So this time is... Students were tracking the black cloud. They're taking real measurements of what was happening to their community and the air around them um, and the environment in their own classroom and in the community around them and were able to make recommendations about how to make changes for their own health. These Pufftron sensors um, were placed throughout their community. They were everywhere from in our classroom to the dry cleaners down the street. They're everywhere around us. Students had to go and find these sensors. As they do that, they're looking at the data of what's really happening around. They're noticing that in my classroom at 8.30 in the morning, um, the carbon dioxide level is over 4,000 parts per million, when it's a regular level is around 300 parts per million. Um, and that at that level, many people can feel sleepy, develop headaches. So when my students are feeling sleepy in my classroom, it's not just because I might be a boring teacher, hopefully not, but it's also because these students are being affected by the environment around them. Like three weeks ago, the CO2 was like in level level four, that was too high for a classroom. And what we did was to put some plants, and now it's like lowered almost half level. We call our city Destiny City because this is the city that we want in the future. And we think that if we could change our city, we're going to make it like this. We're going to make it with more natural resource power and more plants around us because that will help lower the carbon dioxide, which is harming our ozone layer. So we're not going to be affected too much about the sun. This is the kind of authentic knowledge that can make real change. From this project, we could easily tomorrow write a policy recommendation letter to the city council based on the health environment around them. So my hope is that the kids go to their parents and to their workplaces and say, you know what, I'm going to open the window here because I, I need fresh air. And then maybe the window has been closed for 20 years and, and then they open it for the first time. Well, that is something they can 100% own and, and affect uh, themselves.